going on, people? Welcome to Football Carnage. And we got a very big match preview for you guys right here on the channel. We're going to be looking ahead to the Madrid Derby. You got Atletico versus Real Madrid in the biggest game of this very young La Liga season at the Metropolitano. I don't even have to talk about the magnitude of this game. There's so many implications for both of these teams, right? Top four matchup as well. Real Madrid are sitting second. Atletico are in third. Both teams are trying to catch up to Barcelona, who have been flying in the league so far. I mean, Hansi Flick has went to Barcelona, and he has them cooking. I can't even lie. They've picked up a dub in every single game. And both of the Madrid teams have not lost this season, but the draws have hurt them. And as a Madrid fan, a Real Madrid fan, I'm confident heading into this game. And there's only two ways that this can go. It's either both teams draw and drop points, or one of us are going to walk away with all three. And I'm going to need Real Madrid to go there and get me those three points. This is the first real test of our season. We've been playing bums up until this point. Now the season gets serious. This game right here is going to have a lot of implications in the title race. Because it doesn't look like Barcelona are going to be slowing down anytime soon. And you don't want to be the team that loses first. Not with them being on that kind of form. But heading into this game, we've been slightly better than Atletico. We scored more goals. And we've only conceded two more than they have. But we should be beating them. We have a better team than them. We're a better club. We have the better manager. And I do not need to see a repeat of what happened last season at their ground, where they absolutely violated us. That cannot happen again. And I know that we got injuries. And we'll talk about that a little later, right? I know that Mbappe is not going to be there. Brahim Diaz is out. Camavinga is coming back, right? Carvajal should be coming back as well. Again, we'll talk about that a little later on. But regardless of the injuries that we have, we should be going there and winning. And I need to know what you guys think, right? Get in the comment section. Whether you're an Atleti fan, or you're a Real Madrid fan, I want to know what you're thinking about this matchup. What players do you think need to step up? What starting 11 do you want to see? Anything that you're thinking, get in the comment section. Because I'm feeling real confident right now. The form that we're coming into this game with is very positive. And I know last season, right, we were going to war with Atleti. They're the last team to beat us in the league. Literally, around a year ago. They dominated us at their ground. They beat the hell out of us. That was a real embarrassing performance. And I better not see that happen again. We played them four times, right? Twice in the league. They beat us the first game. And then at the Bernabeu, we drew 1-1. And then we played them in the domestic cups. We beat them 5-3 on our way to winning the Spanish Super Cup, right? I remember when Raheem Diaz, he outran Yan Oblak and scored the goal that put the dagger in that match. I think it was like 5-3. Game went to extra time. And then a few days after that game, they knocked us out the Copa del Rey. So just based off of how things went over the past 12 months, Atleti have won two games versus us. We've only beat them once, and then we drew once. So you could maybe say that they have the advantage. But I believe in my boys. I think we will get the three points. I know a lot of people are thinking that this title race is over because of how well Barcelona are playing. 
Yo, we're only seven games in. This race is far from over. Do not count us out. And we'll talk about the form that both teams have been coming into. But I'm going to be real with you, chap. You guys know this is not a Madrid fan channel, right? I try to diversify my content. I do watch-alongs for other people's teams. We've even done Atletico Madrid watch-alongs because I want to talk about everything, Premier League, La Liga, Serie A. But I absolutely hate Atletico Madrid. That is the one club. I think I hate them more than Barcelona. Nah, I'm lying. It's kind of like eh, 1A and 1B with those two bums. But these guys always give us a hard time. They're like a fly that's buzzing near your ear, and you're trying to swap it away, and then it goes away for a second, but then it comes right back, just buzzing near your ear. That's how I view Atletico Madrid. They are a thorn in my side. And I just want to show you guys something, right? I want to show you what their fan base's true colors are. Look at this graphic. Look at this graphic. This is a big Atletico account, by the way. And I couldn't believe when I saw this. But then at the same time, I'm thinking, well, why couldn't I believe it? This is how Atletico fans always are. At least they're match-going fans, right? I don't want to paint everybody in that light but look at this graphic this is what we're going against on sunday and if i was carlo i would print this picture out and i would hang that shit in the locker room they're literally making graphics of them hanging vinicius at letty fans your club is never beating those allegations because we know what you really are and I'm not saying that there's not some good-hearted Atleti fans out there. But a lot of them online and the match-going fans do not do you guys any justice. We need to go out there and beat the shit out of Atleti. This is what we're going against, people. Look at this graphic. The state of this. Imagine actually publicizing this as a big Atleti account, guys. We can't lose to these guys. We can't. And I don't think that we will. There's no way that we're going to see a repeat of what happened last season, September. We're a lot healthier than we were back then. We are missing a few key players. But we still have enough to go out there and pick up the three points. I just could not believe when I saw this. I just want to show you guys what we're going against, what kind of club they are. I hate everything about Atletico Madrid. Everything. I hate their style of play. I hate how pragmatic they are. I don't like a majority of their fans. I don't like what they stand for. They're players. They got some good people there. I gave them credit this summer when they signed Julian Alvarez, when they brought in Connor Gallagher, when they signed Alexander Sorloff. I gave them credit. But a lot of their players are ass. Rodrigo DePaul, bum. Jose Mario Jimenez, bum. Thomas Lamar, bum. I need us to go out there and go crazy versus Atleti. I just wanted to show you guys this tweet because when people try and make it seem like their fan base is not just terrible in general, things like that are a real subtle reminder of the kind of club that they really are, right? Now, let's talk about the form, all right? Because I did bring up the form that Madrid are coming into this game with. Real Madrid, I should say, because obviously both Madrid clubs are going at it this weekend. But you guys know, if you've been watching my channel earlier on in the season, I wasn't happy. We have not lost a game yet, but I thought our performances were not good enough. We've not played anybody so far this season that I actually rate. There is no excuse for us to have dropped 
points against Las Palmas and against Mallorca. There's no excuse. We should have been picking up three points every single game. And up until that Espanol game, we were getting cooked in all of these matchups. We are literally second half FC. Real Sociedad, right? We beat them 2-0. But to be honest, if you watch that game, everybody knows that we should have been down 2-0 going into halftime. These guys hit the post three different times. They were absolutely cooking us. And a few weeks ago, I wasn't confident heading into this Atletico game. Because I thought if our form didn't pick up with the way that we've been playing, if we give all these chances to Atleti, who are going to have Julian Alvarez, right? Griezmann. If we gave them those opportunities that we were letting other teams have, we'd be 2-0 down before the 30th minute. Literally, when the whistle blew, teams were coming out there and dominating. They were implementing their style of play. They were dictating the tempo. We had to rely on Courtois to make save after save after save after save. And we are very lucky that we're heading into this game without a loss. But since that Espanol game, things have been looking a lot better. We've been absolutely cooking. Against Espanol was the first time that I saw us this season go out there and put in a great performance in the first half. And then we followed that up by putting in another amazing performance against Alaves. Do not let that 3-2 scoreline fool you, okay? Do not let us conceding two goals in the 85th minute confuse you with the kind of performance that we had. We dominated them. Yeah, we took our foot off the gas towards the end. But we were cooking. And Madrid are finally looking like a team that's building that chemistry, right? We look like the instructions, and I don't know what Carlo has told them to do differently, but it's working. Now, with that being said, right, there are some concerns heading into this game in terms of the injuries that we're dealing with, right? Because as I alluded to earlier, no Mbappe in this game. No Brahim Diaz, no Dane Ceballos, no David Alaba. Some pretty big misses there. Now, you see Camavinga and Carvajal's name there. Carvajal should be starting this game, right? He was rested against Alaves. And Camavinga, I believe, will be on the bench. I think Camavinga should be able to play in this game. He's returned to training. Both of them have. But the question mark is there because nowadays with Madrid, you got to take the injury news with a grain of salt. They said that Mbappe, after that Alves game, he was feeling a slight discomfort. All the initial reports were saying that he'd be fine. But all of a sudden, now this guy is out there missing basically a month. He's going to miss our next three to four games. Raheem Diaz, he's going to be out for at least another month or so. Dan Ceballos, same thing. David Alaba, I have no idea when this guy is coming back. But while I think Danny Carvajal will start, I don't think Camavinga will. Now, Camavinga coming back, that is a huge boost to our squad, right? Because he is a very good player. Everybody knows that Camavinga's potential is world class. But I don't see him starting this game. He has not played for us this season. He didn't play preseason. And he got injured right before the UEFA Super Cup. So he's yet to make his debut so far for the new season. And I think he will get subbed on. I just don't really see him starting. But these injuries are a bit of a concern. Mbappe goes out there against Espanyol, against Alaves especially, against Alaves. Oh, my God. He was on fire in that first half. You guys know I've been real harsh on Mbappe. Because for me, He's been playing like Ethan Mbappe, not Killian, right? The guy that we were seeing a few weeks ago, it wasn't the same guy that we were seeing at PSG tear up the Champions League. But that game against Alaves, it finally looked like it was starting to click. 
him and Jude with the good chemistry. He scored an open play goal as well. His finishing for that shot was fantastic. And I think Mbappe has been doing a good job this season in terms of as a striker. He's been putting himself in the right positions. He's linking up play. He's making the right runs. He's in the best goal scoring opportunities. But his shooting has been woeful. Every time he was shooting the ball, it looked like he was either going directly at the keeper or it goes wide. He's been on bad form for Real Madrid. He's been on bad form for France. Shit, he was on bad form since Barca played PSG last season in the Champions League. But the game against Espanyol was showing a lot of promises. And then the game against Alaves, it finally came together. And it sucks that now he's injured. Because I'm telling you right now, if Mbappe was out there, my confidence would be even more through the roof. But with that being said, right, I want you guys to get in the comment section and let me know, right? Let me know if you think those injuries are going to be a big deterrent, right? Let me know who you want to see start. Do you think Kamavinga should go in the starting 11? Do you think Endrick should now be starting since Mbappe is injured, right? We are going to build what I think the starting 11 is going to be. I'll give you two starting 11s, actually. We'll do one where I would do what I would put out there, and then I'll do one what I actually think Carlo will do. But I do want to look at Atletico's form, right? Because, again, they've not lost a game either. And they've also... Okay, so the difference between us and them is Atleti have drawn three games. We've only drawn twice. And if I'm looking at their opponents, they've actually played better comp than we have. I'm going to be real. They drew against Villarreal, right? They played Girona, even though Girona are not as good as they were last season. They drew against Espanyol. They've played Bilbao. They've played Valencia. Rio Valencano, they drew. And they played Celta Vigo. So I'd say that their start to La Liga has been slightly more difficult than ours. But to be honest, guys, I mean, they've not been that impressive. Honestly, they've really not. Like, I'm looking, and I've watched, right? I've watched some of these games. And Atleti have just not impressed me. Julian Alvarez, who's a player that I rate highly. When they first signed him from Man City, I was very impressed. I thought he would light up La Liga. He hasn't really done that much, right? I think Griezmann's been on some decent form. Sorloff has been holding bench. They've not been as good as you would probably think Atleti should be. But I do just want to show you guys also what SofaScore is saying should be the possible starting eleven. Right now, we're going to build ours for Madrid, so I'm not even really paying attention to what they're predicting for us. But for Atleti, they think that they're going to go out there in a 5 3 2. They're probably going to just try to defend like they usually do against us, hit us on the counter. I think we need to go out there and dominate possession, right? We need to be the team that's on the front foot because a back five is nasty work. Now, obviously, right, it's going to be more so a 3-5-2 because we know that if they do start Lino and Lorente, they're going to be more in that midfield playing as wingbacks. And we do have to be careful for a Samuel Lino. He cooked last time um, we played them, right? We also have to be wary of a Julian Alvarez, of an Antoine Griezmann. Rodrigo DePaul, I'm not worried. Koke, I'm not worried. And who knows if Conor Gallagher is going to start this game. It's going to be a real hostile environment for us. But we got to defend well. We got to be on point. Now, let's just read their predicted starting 11, right? So they're saying Jan Oblak will be in goal, right? Samuel Lino, left back. Then the three center backs, they're saying um, Mandova, uh, Robert Lendemond, um, Jose Mario Jimenez, and Lorente as that right back. Again, I think this will end up being a 3-5-2. Okay, that's how I think it'll be 
when the whistle was actually blown. They're predicting Connor Gallagher, Koke, and Rodrigo DePaul in midfield, and then two strikers up front in Julian Alvarez and Antoine Griezmann. So let me know what you guys think about that starting 11, right? I think that is probably how they'll line up um, when I'm thinking about it. Um, you know, I, I think, look, we don't know. Diego Simeone is not trying to go out there and play good football, right? I think, yes, Atletico, they do get a bad rep for the kind of football that they play. But in general, right, they do score a lot of goals. Like, they usually are about the third highest goal scorers in the league. So they will find a way to put the ball into the back of the net. But I think against us, they'll be more than happy to shit house a win. They'll be more than happy to play ugly football as long as it means that they take something off of us. Like, we all know. Atletico Madrid are a small club. I'm going to be real. They're not shit compared to us. But how they view these derbies is like their Champions League. This is what they have forward look to. Because we know that Atletico Madrid aren't going to win nothing this season. Nobody thinks they're going to win a trophy. I'm not worried about them. When's the last time they won a trophy? It's been a few years. So we all know how their fans hype this up. And I think it's going to be a good game. I really think that it will. Now, I do want to build, right? As I said earlier, we're going to do two 11s. So the one that we'll do right now is what I would do if I was Carlo. If I was the manager, here's how I would line up. Now, we're going to switch this formation. Obviously, no Mbappe. There's a lot of talk on should Madrid stay in the same formation and just put Endrick up front. I'm going to be real. I don't believe that Endrick starts um, this game. There's no way I think Endrick makes his first start for Real Madrid against Atleti. No way. I don't think that Carlo would put him out there like that. I mean, this guy didn't even start him against Espanyol. I think we're going to go back to the diamond, right? And how I would line up, Courtois in goal. I think the diamond is the way to go. Carvajal, who's supposedly fit, so we need him out there. Obviously, Militao and Rudiger, the center back pairing. It's not like we have any other options. Left back, you got to go Mendy. I remember Lucas Vasquez started um, last season when, when we got absolutely cooked. Samuel Lino was giving him was just giving us issues. I mean, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DM, give me Chuameni, who's the best defensive midfielder in the world. None of this Rodri talk. Chuameni's better than him. Don't care what anybody tells me. Now, I'm going to do Valverde, right CM, which should not be a surprise. Valverde's an absolute monster. I'm going Jude, left CM. Now, I know some people might be saying Luka Modric, Camavinga. That's not what I would do, right? I would do Jude left CM, and this might surprise you. I'm starting Arda Guler in the 10 for this game. Then I would go, obviously, Rodrigo. And then Vinicius. Okay. This is how I would start. If I'm the manager, this is how my formation looks. Let me know what you guys think about this. Now, I know the Arda one might throw people off. But I believe having Arda in that advanced attacking midfielder role would work a lot better than Jude being up there. Just because Arda is better on the ball, right? Arda is a midfielder that can slow down the game as well, can link play with the front line with Vinny and Rodrigo. And I think he's our best 10. I know last season, Jude Bellingham, he did a madness running in that false nine slash 10 role. But I don't believe that's his best position. To me, Jude is a box to box eight. And in this game, we're going to need him to do a lot of defensive work, right? Jude, Chuameni, Fede Valverde, they're engines in that midfield. And they're going to be very busy. It's going to be a very physical game. And I just think Arda Guler is the best attacking midfielder that we have. 
And it does give us a little bit more presence on the ball. Arda Guler being in the starting 11 for this game does raise our technical ceiling as well. And then you can still have Jude crashing the box late. But without Guler in that midfield, I don't really think Jude as a 10, it, it does not work that well if you're going to be asking him to dictate the tempo and to link play and to carry the ball. I'd rather Arda Guler do that. So this is what I would do if I was Carlo, right? You guys can get in the comment section and let me know. But I think Arda's ready to start in a game like this. Arda has started in big pressure moments. You saw him carry Turkey on his back in the Euros. You saw at the, at the end of last season how good he is in front of goal. This guy could take set pieces, right? Corners, free kicks. He's a great crosser of the ball. He can do anything that we need. Let Jude, Chuameni, and Valverde do the dirty work behind him. And then let him, Vinny, and Rodrigo worry about the attack with Jude and Valverde crashing the box late. This can work. We can't keep holding Arda's hand, right? Last season, we brought him along slowly. We know that he was dealing with all those injuries, so fair enough. But you're at Madrid, bro. If you're in the squad, you should be able to play in these kind of games. We shouldn't be holding his hand. I think Vinny and Rodrigo, right? Obviously, they ran this last season, so they should know what to expect. And we did see Rodrigo kind of struggle in this 4-4-2. But right now, with the Mbappe injury, that's just what we have to deal with. And I think that with the form that Rodrigo is on at the moment, he's arguably our best player on form right now. He's feeling it. He is. Vinicius has been cooking this season as well. Future Ballon d'Or winner in about a month's time. Put some respect on his name. But this is how I would line up if I'm Carlo. Again, let me know what you guys think about this one. And then we're going to do a 11 that I actually think Carlo will do, right? So I'm going to do my expected 11. Because do I honestly believe that Carlo is going to go out there and start Endrick, start Arda Guler? No. No. So we're going to have the same back line. All right. Carvajal at right back. Hopefully, whatever, uh, you know, whatever the issue was that kept him out of that Alavis. And hopefully he was only out of, out of that Alavis game just for rest. Right. I didn't see anything about him being injured. So I do expect him back out there. Right. Militao and Rudiger center back pairing. Left back. Mendy, Chuameni in the six, Valverde is still going to be the right CM, and personally, I think he starts Luka Modric, I would not want to start Luka Modric in, in this game, even though Modric is a very good CM still, right, he's like 39 years old, he's still very good on the ball, can still slow down the game, but the issue that I have with Modric in a game like this is I think it might be too fast-paced for him. Because we know that uh, Atletico, they're going to be pressing. And if they're going to be starting Rodrigo DePaul and Koke and Conor Gallagher, those are guys that just run, 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 run. And I don't want Luka Modric to get overrun in that midfield. But I do think Carlo will lean on his experience in this game. And I think he will start Jude in the 10. And then, yeah, same front two, Vinny and Rodrigo. As, as I said, I, I would be very shocked if Endrick is starting. Like, I, I, I actually would have to probably pinch myself to make sure that I'm not dreaming if I see Endrick out there. But this is how I actually think that we will line up, right? So I, I gave you guys the lineup that I would do if I was a manager. And now this is the lineup that I just ultimately think he will end up doing, you know? And... I'll give my score prediction right now. I'm going to say Real Madrid 2-1. I think it'll be a scrappy game, but I'm back in the boys. Regardless of the injuries, we have a better squad than them. This starting 11 should be good enough to go out there and do the job. 
Last time they beat us, we also didn't have too many starting. We haven't lost a game with too many in the starting 11 in how long? We got Courtois, best goalkeeper in the world. Danny Carvajal, best right back in the world, right? Rudiger, one of the best center backs next to Militao, who's very good. You got Ferland Mendy, who's a monster defensively. Chuameni, who's the best DM, in my opinion. Then you got Valverde, one of the best CMs. Modric, who, again, he's up there in age. And that is a slight concern for me, especially with how physical that LA midfield is going to be. But this guy is one of the greatest players that we've seen in the last decade. You got to trust him. And if Carlo decides to go with this 11, I don't mind it. I really don't. Jude in the 10, we saw him do a madness there last season, crashing the box late. Could work. Vinny and Rodrigo, big game players. Vinicius, best attacker in the world. Going to win the Ballon d'Or soon. Absolute monster. Rodrigo, one of the most underrated players in world football. The one, one of the most disrespected players in world football. When he's better than a lot of guys. I think Rodrigo walks into every single starting 11 in world football. There's not one team that I don't think Rodrigo starts for right now. He's world class. He's one of the best wingers in the world. With the form that we've been playing on, heading into this game, I'm confident. If the form was how it was a few weeks ago, I might be talking a little bit different. But how things are looking now, how we've been playing the last two games, Atleti don't want to see us. I'm telling you that right now. It's going to be a bad day to be an Atletico Madrid player. It's going to be a hostile environment. We already know Vinicius is going to get the racism chance. They're going to be doing the monkey stuff with the black players. We all know how Atleti match-going fans are. But we just got to withstand that pressure. I'm going to need Vinny to not get rattled. I'm back in the boys. 2-1 Real Madrid. As I said, man, I need you guys to get in the comment section and let me know your thoughts for this game. What do you guys think about any of the topics that I talked about? Whether you're an Atleti fan, whether you're a Real Madrid fan, whether you don't care about either team, you just want to see a good game, right? You're a neutral. I still want to know what you think. Make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those post notifications so you guys don't miss any time I drop a new video or I go live. We will be here Sunday doing a watch along for this game. Hope to catch you guys there. I'm out. Peace.